Okay, welcome to the Start My Business Masterclass Module 2. Right, so last week, uh, we introduced uh, this masterclass and we had our first module. And of course, I hope you had a lot of learnings from the first module. And again, it's already posted in our group and in, in the website as well. So if you have questions with that module, um, again, just, just message me. Or you just you can also leave a comment. And you know, in that module, we, we opened up, uh, well, I tried my best to open up your minds in terms of business. And we, we uncovered the common myths, the common myths in terms of having or starting your own business. And of course, we talked about the true things that you should be concerned or you should be considering. And we also talked about the elements of a business, the things that you need to do in order for you to grow your business and make it last for a very long time. Kasi nga naman, hindi ka naman mag start lang ng business just for that. Di ba? Um, you, you want to start a business na tagal, hindi yung basta fad lang no, na meron ka negosyo, after a year, balik ka ulit sa employment. We don't want that. So that's why I started uh, the modules that way because still, mindset pa rin yung pinaka-important. I'm watching... One of the videos of Gary Vaynerchuk um, the other day, and again, he said that really, really to be to be successful, you need two things: mindset and tactics. Right? You need to have the right mindset in order for you that to to apply the tactics that you will learn. Because even if you learn great tactics, and actually a lot of them are available in YouTube, in video, in in Google's, in Google, in 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 books, audio books. A lot of free content out there, but if you don't have the right mindset, wala rin mangyayari. And that's why me as well, that's how I also train people. I want you to have the right mindset before you can uh, really go to your next level and you start a, a great business. Right? So, um, and people know me as, as one of the owners of Driven. Actually, right now, I'm the president of Driven Marketing Group. And, you know, this company... Uh, it has has grown so much from a hundred fifty million a year sales business last two thousand and ten, and for the next eight years, for the past eight years, it has grown to a two billion a year company. That's what's with what's with we've been selling for the past three years as well. All right, so um, and I, I feel that I have the responsibility, aside from being blessed, I have I have the responsibility to sh to share my blessings to other people and this is the reason why I also I wanted to to do this this topic because uh, the more I do my my talks I'm creating my content a lot of people are are really interested I saw people interested in in investing but more importantly for me the the more sustainable um, way for you to be able to go home for good if you're an OFW and you know, make sure that you will be having income up until you retire is that you have to start your own business. And because when you start your own business, you can have more income to invest, right? And you have more upside, meaning mas malaki yung chance na double or triple more yung income compared, let's say, just being an employee. Yes, your income grows once in a while. However, it's beyond your control, no, usually control of other people. I also, I, I, you also know me that I entered Film Life. I'm also a financial advisor and um, a unit manager there. I'm running teams as well because that's the business that I love. I love, um, you know, running teams because uh, I can see the impact that I have in people that has been with me, right? So, hindi lang siya basta na-inspire lang, nakinig lang ng video ko, but talaga nakasama ko sa negosyo and, and I like that, having that. And of course... Of course, I've been running uh, the business consultancy under the DJ Dimaliwat brand, and this training is also part of that. You know, yesterday, I just had a one whole day seminar that's called Leaders Awakening. That's my personal development brand. And we had a, a whole day workshop from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's one of the workshops that I run every quarter or every two months here in the Philippines. And that's one of the most sought after training. It was well attended yesterday. It's 47 attendees. And, and, you know, kahit pumabag yun dito sa Philippines, and people really came. And uh, we had a, a blast yesterday. And, and I'm just so happy to, 
be part of their growth. Right? So, you know, I'm also the author of the Secret Life of a Young Millionaire book. It's selling at 486 pesos. They're in Singapore. You got it at, at 10 SGD. Right? If you got it. And of course, you can also get a, um, an ebook version in my website. That's djdimaliwat.com slash secret book. Right? So, again, the number one objective of this webinar is, of course, is for you to be able to, to ready yourself to start your own business in six to eight weeks. That's the goal, right? So um, we'll be having at least six sessions here. And of course, a break in between after three sessions so that you can have time to implement what you've been learning. Because sometimes when there's too much information, we'll be tayo. So, so after three sessions, we'll be having maybe around two-week break. Then after those, those two weeks, then we start again module four. Right? So, and you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I got these topics from you guys as well. So what I did is I asked questions, right? Your, what is your number one question in terms of starting your own business? And the top six questions are right here, right? How to grow the business and make it successful. That's what we talked about last year. Uh, sorry, last module. Now, also, you, uh, you ask how to make a simple business plan. Ano ba kung magsisimula? Kailangan ko ba ng business plan? Right? Also, business options to start today. Right? How to start your own, um, your, your, own business op uh, your own business. What are the options for me, for you? How much capital do I need? You also ask that. How to set up a business and what are the permits needed? No, that's, uh, that's what you are uh, asking as well. Ano ba yung mga kailangan dito? And I never really thought of it no, and, and maganda nga pala, no, me coming back uh, or, or looking back at when we started, kung merong akong guide no, or may nagturo sa akin ano yung mga things that I need to set up a business, it will be easier. We won't experience a lot of penalties in the government institutions na hindi kami nakapagbayad ka agad din yan. So, so, sobrang important yun. And of course, how to transition from being an employee to an entrepreneur. Right, so these are the things that we'll be talking about for the next six weeks. Right, so right now let's talk about how to make a simple business plan. Right, and again, um, let's talk about the first element. Right, the first element is a problem solution statement. In order for you to create a simple business plan, and that's why I, I talked about a uh, simple business plan, is because you don't need to have a complicated business plan to be successful. You just need the simple um, elements that I will be sharing with you in the, ne in the next few slides, right? So a problem solution statement is you create a statement wherein you will answer these two questions, right? The first question is, what's the problem? What's the problem that you're trying to solve? As we all know, entrepreneurship is, you know, there's a problem in you providing solutions for it. Right? You cannot really have a business if you're not solving problems. People won't pay for it. Right? So people would pay if your product or your service solves their biggest problems. Right? So what's my solution to that problem? So what you can do in your business plan, if you want to write a business plan, is even it's just simple in a few sentences or paragraphs state the problem ikwento mo no bakit problema yan ganyan ikwento mo siya sa sarili mo as if you will be selling your business to other people no i want you to to write it down no ito yung problema and then this is the solution and i do you kung isipin mo lang yan na nasa utak mo no this will be a homework for you right I want you to do this and I want you to send this to me. Right? You can also send this to me in a PDF file right? so that I would also know if you're doing this. Right? So you can send it in my Facebook page or in my website, or sorry, in my email, business at djdmaliwat.com. Right? So you, know, you, you ask the problem, what's the problem? Why do I need to solve this problem? And then what is your solution to that problem? Right? So because every business is created to solve a problem. And if, you're, if you want uh, some ideas, you can watch The Shark Tank. I've been watching that in Netflix and I love 
uh, seeing entrepreneurs having ideas, you know, and daming taong may idea, no? And daming nila bagong ideas. It's so amazing, maybe coming from their background and their drive to really be a business owner. So they created products or services, and then they're pitching this to the sharks or to the investors, de ba? To invest in their business. So meaning, there's really a, a, a lot of big ideas. Like for example, if I'm sure you're, you're familiar with Uber and Grab, right? One of the things that I really hate when I ride taxis is that I have to line up, de ba? I have to line up, and I'm not sure how long silang darating. There are times, ang haba ng pila sa taxi, there are times, walang pila pero wala rin dumadaan. Di ba? So, just having a ride hailing app would really uh, made me sure, di ba, na, oy may darating. I can shop around kung nasa mall ako or I can do this or do that. Hindi ako maghihintay sa lobby ng condo ko. Because I know, no, approximately how much how many minutes this the, the driver will arrive? So, sobrang important siya. Ang laking bagay nun. So, that's, that's, there's a problem that Uber and Grabs uh, solved. Right? Of course, let's not talk about the political issues or the concerns. Let's think first, or I want you to think first, what's the problem that you want to solve? Right? And write it down in a Word file. Right? So that you can have that this is like your study already before you even start your business. Okay, so now element number two of a simple business plan is a target market. Of course, you got to know your target market. And the worst thing in marketing, well, this is what I learned in, in my marketing training. The worst thing in marketing is that when you ask what is your target marketing, target market, you will say everyone. Right? In, mar in marketing, there's no such thing as everyone. Right? Because sasabog ka. You got to know your niche. You got to know a certain target market. No, there's no such thing as everyone. Like for example, no? um, you will, let's say Gardenia. I just want to use Gardenia for an example because I'm really amazed naglabas sila ng new big na Gardenia din. And, and, and the price is I think half of of their price, no, parang 60 plus yung 60 plus pesos or almost 70 pesos yung um, yung original and then 36 pesos lang in new bake, no. So meaning, um, even a, a, a loaf bread, they cannot say na everyone is their market, kasi nga, di ba? Medyo mas mahal sila compared to other people. Pero they have the convenience, lagi silang fresh, lahat ng tindahan halos nila deliveran, nila refresh they refill regularly so that's their value proposition pero they are targeting some people who are you know are willing to spend right and kaya nga nagpapa field trip din sila sa sa planta nila diba meaning they want to show that they make quality bread so they are targeting a certain hindi naman elite but you know a b class probably c class right so yun yung target market nila diba so Every business knows their target market, right? Uh, another thing like uh, sa beer, no? Sa beer. Although, hindi ako masyadong malakas uminom, but napagkwentuhan lang. Like say, I think Colt 45, they say it's stronger than Red Horse, right? So, but wala akong nabibili or nakikita ng Colt 45 masyado rito sa Metro Manila. But according to some of my friends, when you go out of town, dun sila malakas. Meaning, they know their target market. And they are still striving. Diba? So, you got to know your target market. That's just my point. You got to know your target market when you start your own business. Right? The worst thing that you would say if I ask you what is your target market or who is your target market is everyone. Because there's no such thing as everyone. You got to really know your target market so that you would know how to sell to them. Right? So, that's element number two. Right? So, you got to ask, who do I want to cater and how large? Because this is part of your study. Right? Again, in Shark Tank, the, the, the sharks, the investors, would compute somehow or would always know if the target market is, is large enough. Right? But also, they will also won't invest if you're 
target market is confusing if you're all over the place. So you got to have a balance of a good number and still specific niche. Di ba? Para hindi ka confused. Because you know, mauubos ang pera mo if you target everyone. Sa marketing pa lang. So you got to know who are your target market. Right? Sino yung gusto mong i-cater? Right? So, you gotta differentiate. And, and, and that way, you can differentiate yourself. Like for example, um, personal development training. I, I've been running the, the Leaders Awakening for, for one day, one whole day. Right? I was a graduate of that training. Usually, eight years ago, it was three days. And then, after two years, 2012, I met a team that's been running the same personal development training for only two days. So it's, it's amazing because it's Sabado, Linggo na lang. Unlike before, I have to, to give my Friday for them. And then now, I realize that, you know, there are people who don't have much time at pag sinabi mong two days ayaw, kahit they can afford the training. So what I decided is I created modules that are equally good and, and um, life-changing for only one day. Pero kailangan 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Medyo whole day siya. No, pero at least, wala nang uwian. Di ba? Parang hindi na... Uh, kasi there are times, no? Dumating ng Saturday, hindi dumating ng Sunday. So parang sayang lang din. Hindi niya rin na kompleto. Here in just one day, I, I, I targeted people who likes that. Di ba? And then, mas mababa ng konti yung price. But of course, people enroll their, their kids. Like yesterday, uh, we have 15-year-olds attending, 16-year-olds attending. Another, another 13 year old attending, right? So, and, and may mga klase sila mga 30s and 40s and 50s. So, nakakatawa yung dynamics, right? And they learned a lot. So, you know, that's, that's how you start a business, right? You decide the market that you want to cater. You gotta define, and in your business plan, in your word file, you write down, sino sila? And ano yung, you gotta study, gano sila kalaki. Right? Para malaman mo if there's a market or not. Because, you know, there's no sense really in, in starting a business if there's not enough market. Baka hindi ka lang kumita. Right? Or maybe, sayang yung time, there could be other, other ways. Right? Or other businesses that can be. Okay. So, the third element is a market study. So, now... As I told you earlier, um, once you've, you've determined your target market and sinulat mo, you have defined them, I want you to make a study of the market. Right? So, tignan mo how they behave, what is they, their psychology. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a fan too much of demographics, but I'm a fan of psychographics, meaning... Where do they watch? Where do they hang out? Anong pinapanood nilang uh, TV show? Ganyan. Di ba? Uh, how do, ano yung mga words na uso sa kanila? Ganyan. Di ba? So, you reach out to that person. Because you know, di ba? Kahit kasi, um, kahit kasi, kumbaga, um, anong age niyan? Kahit anong age niyan? Kung bibili yan, di ba? I don't really mind. So I don't really um, mind the demographics about that. Right? So, you know, think of how they behave. How your market behaves. Right? What are the existing products and services being offered by the competition? Tignan mo rin. Di ba? Like, again, going back to, to my story earlier, Right, I'm a graduate of personal development training uh, seminars. That is a three-day seminar way back 2010, and then a two-day seminar, right, as well. And I wanted to create my own simply because, of course, there's a lot of demand as well, and people want me to do it as well. But I also don't want to run it for two days because and dami ko ginagawa, di ba? So I saw an opportunity that you know, what if I can create a training that will run for one whole day, pero 8 a.m. and 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. para sulit pa rin at marami pa rin silang natutunan. And, and I created that and we have been running three batches so successful, at least 40 yung umaten. Uh, and sobrang ganda. 
diba? it, it's it's really life changing and, and I'm happy with the feedback you know so because I studied what other people offer and I continue to study it right now so kasi hindi lang naman ito sa simula pa lang no while you're starting your business habang nagsisimula yan you also do a market study because you know at first the first three months, probably six months, if it's not working, probably you can now change your product. Diba? So that's also part of the market study. Right? Or you can do tests. Depends sa produkto mo eh. Diba? You can do free taste if it's a food. Right? So um, you can do a lot of things for that. So bottom line is, you know, check out your competition so that you know, first of all, Competition is good because if you don't have competition, baka um, wala ring gusto niyang produkto mo. That's, that's one way to look at it. However, hindi rin naman dapat siya masyadong red ocean na ang dami ng kalaban. Di ba? Na baka hindi ka na makapenetrate or there are big players playing in that market. So if there are, always think how you can differentiate yourself and your service Right? And don't always think about the price. Kasi kapag nakipagbabaan ka ng price, you're killing your own business or you're killing the industry. It's not like that. Right? You gotta also maintain a certain price and maintain a certain respect for the business, diba? for the quality. Diba? A lot of businesses who, who don't really study, you know, just, just want to make money for the short term, always kill the market or kill the businesses by lowering down their price. But ang nangyayari, tumataas ng lahat ng bilihin and everything, lahat ng gaslusin, pasweldo sa tao, you cannot sustain that. It's not sustainable. Right? So don't ever do that. Now you also ask, how will I sell to my chosen target market? Di ba? Uh, online ba yan? Uh, door-to-door ba yan? Will you use a network of distributors? Di ba? What will be your marketing activities? Right? Will you spend ads in Facebook? Are they in Instagram? Are they in Snapchat? Diba? Uh, do they watch TV pa? Or do they listen to the radio? Diba? Kung sino target market mo, diba? I, you know, ako, I'm amazed right, in, in radio. Because ever since I've been driving, of course, I listen to radios and there's a lot of cool commercials that, alam mo, sobrang na natitinker nila yung imagination ko, di ba? Doon pa lang sa voice, talents. Ang galing ng mga commercial, di ba? And you know, bakit marami pa rin nagko-commercial sa radio, di ba? Simply because maybe their target market are people who are driving or maybe in the, riding the taxi or even yung mga taxi drivers, di ba? So, there's a certain target market kaya doon ka nag advertise you got to study your market. You got to study how they move, how they think, what do they eat, probably, if it's related to you. Right? I would rather do psychographics than demographics. The age doesn't matter anymore. Right? Unless, of course, uh, you're comparing age 60 to age 20. Ganyan, diba? But, you know, it's not really that important. What's more important for me is the psychographics. If you can understand your market, then you can sell to them. And of course, part of what you will write, I hope you're taking notes now, right? Is what you will write in your thesis or wag naman natin tawagin thesis, but business plan, in a one-page business plan or a two-page business plan is what will be my edge over my competition so that you know and you'll be confident. Diba? And again, don't just talk about price, right? Because believe me, you would want to sell higher quality products, mas maliit yung, mas kokonti yung kausap mo, pero pareho lang yung kita, di ba? Much better na yun. Go high ticket as much as possible. Di ba? Or yung tamang price, mas konti yung kausap, but um, mas, mara, mas, kumbaga, mas may time ka for yourself to do that. And sometimes, people who pray at a premium mas masarap kausap or mas madaling kausap because you deliver based on quality not based on price. Di ba? Ganon. So, and, and if you believe in yourself that you know you can really deliver quality then might as well 
price your services or your products really well. Okay, element number four, profitability. You gotta compute as well. Kung kikita ka ba o hindi. Again, walang sense mag-start ng business kung hindi ka kikita. So that's very important that you know, right, to be, uh, how to be profitable. Right? So you ask, what is my core product? And what are, uh, what are my secondary products? Right? So you gotta know ano yung produkto na nagbibigay sa'yo ng main income and ano yung flagship product mo or flagship service mo saan ka ba makikilala right write it down and ideally ideally you don't have you don't just have one maganda meron kang supporting products right uh, one thing that i learned from Rajiv Talreja in his space system space program is you got to have a primary product and then you got to also have an easy to buy product Right? So, meaning ito yung maliit yung kita, pero madali lang din ibenta. And then, of course, the main product, and of course, yung high-value product. Wherein, okay, medyo mahirap ibenta, high maintenance, pero malaki naman yung kita. Diba? So, in between yung major product mo, mas maganda kung meron ang mas mura, na easy to sell, or easy to buy, and of course, high-value. Ito yung kukonti lang yung kliyente mo rito, but you're giving your best dito sa, sa ginagawa mo na to. And sometimes it takes more time, however, big, bigger yung result. So, yun yung mga palaki yung business mo. So, you, you, you identify dun sa tatlo na yun. What is, my, what is your main product? What is your easy-to-buy product? And what is your, um, your high-value product? Oops. Right? You also write down what is what will be my major expenses. Ano ba yung mga pagkakagasusan mo? Diba? So, sulat mo yun. You have to know. You gotta make a study of what will be the expenses that will be incurred. You will incur. Right? The cost of goods sold. Right? Yung mga materials na bibilihin mo to create your products. Maybe salaries, rents, utilities. Write it down. Think it over. And then compute. Diba? Magkakakumpute ka ng mga fixed cost. May benta o wala, gagasos sa mo mga rent. Utilities probably, um, probably um, salaries. Those are some of your fixed cost. Or if you are amortizing a car or a vehicle, that's a fixed cost. And then the variable cost. Per unit, magkano yung cost? And then you total the expenses, probably, depending, magta-test ka kung depende sa benta. And then, compute mo your profitability kung magkano yung pwede mong kitain on a monthly basis. And if it's worth it for you, then go for it. Right? So, again, the major expenses, rent, utilities, uh, salaries, maybe permits as well, gagasos mo yun sa simula. Variable expenses are transportation, mag-deliver ka kung mayroon lang order, cost of goods, syempre, or services, taxes as well, you pay usually higher kapag uh, mas maraming benta. Right? And of course, and then compute a break-even point. compute mo yan, example, your, your fixed cost is 10,000 pesos. No, Mag-rent na ka, ganyan, meron kang gasos every month. And then, um, you're selling, ang tubo mo sa isang produkto mo, for example, is 1,000 pesos. Just, just to uh, make it simple, no? binibenta mo ng 2,000 for you, the cost for you to buy and deliver and everything kasama lahat ng variables is 1,000. So, tubo ka ng 1,000. Meaning, 10,000 yung fixed cost mo divided by 1,000 kasi pa yung, pa yung natitira mo na income, divide mo yun, you need 10 units to sell every month. So, you gotta know ilan yung break-even point mo. ba? If kaya mo, if feeling mo, kaya mong ma-meet yung break-even point mo, yung number of units, then go ahead. Kasi you will just do your best para mahit mo pa yung higher than that. Diba? So, ganun lang siya kasimple. Right? You want to make your business plan simple. Right? So, ganun siya. Diba? Ito yung sinasabi ko. Break-even point, you get the fixed cost, divide mo siya sa profit margin, profit margin per unit. So, kung 10,000 yung fixed cost mo, profit margin mo per unit is 1,000. 10,000 minus 1,000, divided by 1,000, that's 10 units. 
right? So, yan yun, unit price minus cost of goods and services. Ganyan i-compute yung profit margin mo per unit. Diba? Kung unit price mo is 2,000, cost of goods mo is 1,000. So, profit margin mo per unit is 1,000. So, 10,000 divided by 1,000, 10 units. If you can sell more than 10 units, you are profitable, you know, for, at least for the first few months of your business. That's so important. Makompute mo man lang yung ganyang ka-basic. Diba? So, I hope kinokopya mo to. Or if not, you are replaying this video or pausing this if you are watching this on a recorded fashion. Right? And of course, the fifth element is key people. You gotta know sino mga tao kasama mo. What help do I need and where should I get them? Do you need employees if you have the, the, the luxury and the, the money to pay them? Or maybe you need your family members. Maybe yung asawa mo or kapatid mo, they have a skill set that you don't have. Na, at nandetermine mo yun ang kailangan mo. Then maybe you talk to them. Or you know some friends where you can be, whom you can be your business partners. That's what we did with Driven Marketing Group. Diba? Uh, we talked to our partners and we created a company, five of us, 2010, May 2010. And of course, we've been running for the past eight years. Right? Because, you know, we realized that we want to work with people and we need their own expertise. <laughs> So me and Lubar talked about it, look, look for partners. So we, we approached Rex, Gary, and Van, right? Because they have their own expertise. And that's the reason why our company has been running because we got partners and we know what type of help we needed, especially during the start. And of course, element number six is milestones or are the milestones, diba? You need your first year milestone, no? Kailangan mong kailangan mong mag-set ano yung kailangan o gusto mong ma-achieve during your first year. Right? Driven's first year, we just wanted to, to, to sell 100 million. Sabi namin, siguro kung mga 100 million, kahit tayong naman, wala tayong other agents, uh, mag-strive yung company. And true enough, we sold 150 million during our first year. Diba? So that's so important. And then, you also gotta create your five-year milestone. So susulat mo yan sa business plan mo. You know, just make a draft. No? Version 1 is always better than version none, according to Alex Mandoshan. So it's so important no, to create that. Have a, have a five-year milestone after your one-year milestone. Isulat mo anong gusto mong create so that you have a big vision. Right? After the one year and five years, maybe ten years ahead, probably if you can do two, 20 years ahead, what do you want to create out of your business? Hindi kasi pwedeng, yun nga, again, gusto ko lang kumita ng pera. Hindi ganun eh. For your business to be really long-lasting and for your business plan to be really exciting, na kahit kumikita ka na, alam mo, gigil na gigil ka pa rin, the only way to do that is, of course, to have a big vision of the future. You really want to, you really know what you want to create for your business. Right? So, that's so simple but so important. You need to create milestones first year, Fifth year, and then maybe 10 to 20 years. What do you want to create? What is your dream for your business? Right? And what's your checkered flag? Yun nga. Ano yung, maybe if, pag nag-retire ka, and ito pa rin yung business mo, ano yung gusto mo makreate sa negosyo na to? And of course, lastly, element number seven is your brand. How do you want to be known for? Saan mo gusto makilala? No? Yung, yung company mo. You know, driven Marketing Group, we want to be at the top uh, online real estate marketing company in the Philippines. And that's why a lot of, we, got, we attracted a lot of people and actually we have created a lot of entrepreneurs already. Right? And, and even developers come to us because we got known for that. And of course, we have a bigger vision of being a developer also in the near future as well. And even though, and even we're already eight years, we're still excited because we have a big vision ahead of us. And we also be known, want to be known about it. Na hindi lang kami naging brokers and real estate marketers, but also developers as well. Right? So again, uh, that's, that's our module too. That's a very short module, but you know, I hope you really learned a lot. If you have questions, you can ask me. Right? And, and again, uh, as I mentioned, I, I, I congratulate you for, for being here because you're investing in your education. Right? If you want to have a copy of my book, just go to djdmaliwat.com slash secretbook. All right, so thank you very much.